And you've heard us say it, these protests are about the death of George Floyd. They are about police brutality and systemic racism. And tonight we want to give you a closer look at one incident at one grocery store, which started with one call to police about a man with a gun. And you will see the video for yourself. It's a situation we hope will make us all look deeper inside ourselves about how we think and how we would react. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo takes us 360. I was wondering if we could get an officer right away over here to do a drive by. It's this 911 call by a Safeway employee that sparked a response now in question. A black young male with a white hoodie. The customer that um, witnessed it and saw it um, said that this gentleman has a gun. Denver police did not release the emergency call to Denver 7. It was provided by Naptali Israel's attorney. We'll show you what happens next from different angles and provide you different perspectives. So let's take this 360. You'll hear from DPD. The father detained Israel, an expert in use of force cases and the civil rights attorney representing the father. In this video, you see a patrol car respond to the silver Cadillac described in the 911 call. The car doors are open and the sergeant approaches on foot and points his gun at the car. Fingers not on the trigger, but uh, um, if a target were to present itself, they, you know, it's up, you know, they would be able to, to respond to that threat. When a second officer arrives, they both approach the car from afar. A 14 year old, seven year old and two year old are inside the car. Minutes later, the father approaches police. We got a call that you have a gun. Police that's detain that's Israel and pat we're him down. English He's got girl. some in his spot. They didn't find a gun on him, but admit they didn't search his car. Right, pat me down. I don't have any weapons. It's protocol to, uh, especially when you're dealing with a, a weapons call, to safely secure that person while you conduct that search. Fear. Just, I was, I was afraid for them. I was afraid for my life. But at the same time, um, I felt helpless. Israel was released moments later, but the incident is one he says many black people face. There was nothing in that call to say that a black male was uh, trying to assault anyone, trying to rob anyone, trying to hurt anyone. Caucasian people in Colorado drive around with their guns in their vehicle. It's not illegal to conceal and carry. Correct. So do you think this was handled appropriately? I do because um, because while it's certainly uh, legal to to possess a weapon and have a weapon in your vehicle, I certainly think that there's reason for concern. There's a potential that this person could have been readying to rob the store or readying to assault someone in the parking lot. But David Lane, a civil rights attorney, disputes that stance. To pull a gun on a 14-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 2-year-old girl uh, while you're investigating no crime having been committed is ridiculously excessive. The 14-year-old actually wet her pants and is in therapy. The 7-year-old is in therapy. Denver Police Division Chief says as a precaution, the officer approached from behind. He was not able to identify um, ages or the sex of the people that were in the car. The car does not have tenant windows at all. Um, both doors were open uh, to the car on the left side and the right side. Edward Obashi, a deputy sheriff in California and leading expert witness in use of force, reviewed the video. It was a 15 second, uh, approximately 15 seconds of pointing his firearm at the potential threat but then immediately lowered his uh, firearm when he saw the toddler. He said, I think they handled it appropriately. They handled it with, with uh, the circumstances that were present for them. Well, I don't see any evidence of, a, of over aggression here. Obashi admits the sergeant could have waited for a second officer to arrive for a better perspective of who was inside the vehicle but says without all the details of how the dispatcher relayed the report to officers, he's not sure it would change the outcome. Recognize how unfortunate it is that sometimes we uh, act upon uh, information that's, that's false or incorrect, um, but I think the officers did what they could to, to minimize the damage. Israel filed a complaint with the Denver Police Department. It's under investigation. They're also investigating why the sergeant's body camera wasn't rolling. Israel says he did his best to keep his cool and follow the orders of officers. I felt like it, they did a good job in their encounter with me. But adds his children were traumatized 
and felt he was discriminated against. We teach our officers not to use race as a determinant to make a, a stop or a contact, but certainly if that is part of the description. Can you tell me how many white people with concealed weapons permits go shopping at that Safeway every single day? And every one of them could pull that gun and rob the store or shoot it up or do whatever. Now, the Denver Police Department has reached out to Mr. Israel to set up a meeting to discuss how this situation was handled. His attorney tells me NAACP is helping arrange a meeting for June 18th. This incident happened back in May, but video was just released a few days ago. At this time, a lawsuit has not been filed. In the studio, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. All right, Addie, thank you for that. So you have now seen the video. You have heard the perspectives. What would you do? Please tell us right now. 360 at the DenverChannel.com is the email, and we read every single one of them.